Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Eddie Marcus, spokesman and advocate for basic human rights for all people, meaning that you, every last one of you, every human being in America, and hopefully every human being on the planet, can experience their dreams, those wonderful dreams that you've had about life, experience them today. I'm also a write-in candidate for President of the United States. And I'm doing this so that I could be the voice in that higher up office to help free all of you from everything that binds you that we as people have control over. And I'm also a social scientist, meaning that I've spent a lot of time studying cultures, studying people, trying to understand and understanding solutions to the problems that people experience every day. And yet, having done all these things, I'm quite perplexed many times because what seems to be the reasonable, understandable solution seems to be so difficult for other people to ascertain. You know, when I think about all of the hard times, the crisis, the vices, the crime, the violence, the war, the terrorism that goes on on this earth, it kind of makes me think that people should want something better, they should want something different, and that they should be willing to apply themselves to cause something different to happen in their lives. Yet and still, it doesn't happen. If we go back to some of our earliest teachings, we go back to the time when we start talking about religion, we start talking about God. And for folks in America, for the most part, many of you have championed the idea that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and that Jesus came to this earth, many folks say, to show us how to live. Others say that he came to die so that we wouldn't have to die in the spiritual world. Now, you and I both, neither one of us know which is true, because we've heard both of them. But there are a few things that I, as a social scientist, as spokesman and advocate for basic human rights, and a write-in candidate for president, do know. I do know what the prerequisites are for peace, prosperity, and joy. And I want to take one of those biblical stories to share something with you. You have heard it said that there was an angel of light in heaven, Lucifer. And uh, we've heard that Lucifer was a little jealous at God. He didn't like the way God did things, and so he ended up, make a long story short, being kicked out of heaven. And a third of the host of heaven came with him, which means he had had some influence. But that can be kind of difficult for the average Joe Blow to understand. So I'm going to see if I can create a scenario that will be a little bit much easier to understand. You know man, you are humankind, so you know mankind. You know how mankind acts. You've experienced it. I know sometimes you try to show a blind eye to parts of it. But the reality of it is, you have experienced it. Well, look at this. Let me tell you this. God exists. And everybody knows it. Atheist knows it. Everybody that's alive knows that God exists. And God put order in that which he created. Even in you and I. We have order. But he left something that we should participate in. And that was giving us free will to choose the way we want to live. Now, choosing the way we want to live gives us a little bit of what we call freedom. Just like Lucifer wanted to choose his way to live, then God gave us the same freedom to choose the way we want to live. We can live peacefully, prosperously, joyously. Or we can live in crime and violence and terrorism and war, poverty and some people doing good while others are doing worse. Well, let me share this. Man, God put man on this earth. And one man decided that God's plan for life was not the best plan. That his plan, and I say he is, was better than God's plan. And in order to get that plan moving, he had to find some support. So he went out and found a scheme like Barney Madoff and the 
the schemes that uh, he and others like him would run on people. This one man ran up a scheme and he brought in a certain number of people and said that we can do these things. We can be champions of this. We can be the best. We are the best. We have the right color. We have the right flavor. We have the right eye color. We got the right hairstyle, texture. We got uh, the right location. Uh, in our existence, we got everything that makes us superior to all those who do not fall in this category. So we should come together and create a system that promotes us and everybody else should be there to support us as well. And they did. They came together, ladies and gentlemen. They decided that while God said that everybody on earth needed food, clothing, and shelter at least, Food, clothing, and shelter. Food to eat to keep your body alive. Shelter to keep you out of the elements. And clothing so you don't have to be naked. Everyone. Everyone. And after that, God made sure that in order for you to be able to meet these standards from the beginning through the end, that you be educated, that you be protected by your health, and that you participate in the things that happen on this earth so that it would be, and never, should I say, never run out or be depleted. It will always be stuff that you need, stuff that you want. Why? Because you created it. God, a magnificent God. But this man decided that some people should have houses, wonderful houses as they can create them, and other people should just live in whatever else they want. Now the evidence of that in America is that we know what happened to the natives. Their land was confiscated. They were put into reservations. And they were basically slaughtered, wiped out. Now who did that? Was that God or was that man? That was man. And often while man did these things, he did this under the cover of religion. His love for God and his knowledge of God. The same man wanted so much power that he chose to deny women their power. Gave a woman a position in the house, cooking and washing and having sex with him, having his babies. That's what they gave to women. And then other people like blacks, they were relegated to slavery. <clears throat> but this started with one man who decided that the certain group of people could be sold all of this and everybody else would be so much less. So he turned these blacks into slaves. And you know the story about slavery. And they did all of that under the guise of religion, under the guise of their love for God. <clears throat> And as they did these things to the people here in the geographical location that they shared, you who can think a little bit can imagine what they would do to people in other locations. This one man decided that they would just rip people off, even white people. And you could tell the people that were ripped off. You can look anywhere and identify them. Had nothing to do with their color that much. Sometimes the color played a major role, but not necessarily. <clears throat> One thing that was common amongst all the people that were ripped off is this. They were poor. And the people that supported this one man and his clan that decided that they were going to be God were people who wanted to be God, just like them. They just weren't able to enter in at that present time. But they were put in storage, as it were, and they became, for lack of a better word, the middle class, working their way to become like those who had stolen everything. And it worked for a long, long time. But he got to a point in time where the poor were so poor that they really had nothing more to offer. Technology had advanced, and they really didn't need the labor, the labor force of so many poor people. <clears throat> but yet and still, this greed that started with this one man that was shedded with all those people that supported him, all the way down through the middle class, didn't dissipate. 
it stayed strong because the more that the those that had got the more they wanted so in order to get more they decided that while they had instituted certain programs to pretend like they had some godliness in them by supporting in some form or fashion the poor they wanted to cut that out cut out entitlements as it were and then that would give them access to more material gain but that wasn't just enough in order to get more they decided to since the poor had been robbed they decided to start robbing the middle class and now the middle class realized that they are not they are not protected from the same conditions and treatment of those who had gone before them and they are rallying back and yet they think that the world should turn around or America should turn around and protect them from that advancement of the rich as it were while they ignored the poor and are still ignoring the poor hypocrisy everybody is getting what they deserve because the God who made the one man made all the men and informed them that they were supposed to bow down to no other but the God of creation however if they wanted to live the life of life now if they did want to live the life of life then they could follow the dictate of should I say man well <clears throat> after having known having gotten this information and knowing this information I readily ran out for 30 some years sharing this information with you saying to you the American people and people all over the world who wanted to hear that God made you and God made everything and everything that's usable on this earth by man was made for the service of man for all of them and that if you treated God with respect you would treat one another with respect and in treating one another with respect you would protect each other from anything that would divide you anything that would conquer you that's the message that I've been saying for 33 years now and no one has been able to hear that message not poor people not middle class people not rich people not black people not white people not men not women not religious people not non-religious people nobody has been wanting to hear this message now after 30 some years we have a political season that is open and you got Republicans talking about God God this and God that the same people you got a governor down in Texas who's thinking about entering a race and what is his champion slogan God you got Republicans in Minnesota talking about God you got I, I don't I can't I, I can't recall at this time any Democrat that's champion God yet I'm sure there's some but I can't recall any and they are going at it strong I knew that there will come a day when a white person would start talking about God in politics and I always said that if a white man said it it would be zooming straight on out of the stratosphere but because me and what I am and represent nobody would hear it but I want you to think about this before you get all excited there was God that put black people in slavery according to those people who were in power. It is God who's out there uh, empowering people to go out there with guns and kill folks in other lands in the name of war. It's God doing that. You ask them, they'll tell you they're doing it in the name of God. See, that God I don't know. The God that I know is not talking about killing people. He's talking about ways and means to even quiet the anger so there will be no need to even fight, let alone kill. But who wants to hear that message? Who wants to hear the message of peace, prosperity, and joy? Let me say this to you, ladies and gentlemen. You've heard the message. You've heard it today. And you close a closed ear. Those of you who are in the church today, after 30 some years, still have a closed ear. Because you are afraid of the system. More afraid of the system and what it will do to you than your love for God. No, oh, you say you love God, but God said, if you love me, you do what I say. If you're a man, you got a wife, she listens to you. She doesn't listen to the man down the street. If you're a wife, you got a husband, he pays attention to you, not the one down the street. So if you are a servant of God, you pay attention to God, not to the man in Washington, unless the man in Washington is doing what God wants done. And if the man in Washington wants what God wants done and you don't, you'll kill him like you always do. Well, 
that just tells me that you're a blind person, that you are your own God. You have no respect for the real God. You've got no respect for any human being. Thus, you have no respect for yourself. But I want to say to you, everybody in America, God has prepared a home for you, a home of your choosing, and you can have that home equipped as you want to have it equipped. Every American, God has prepared that you could have transportation, whether it's private or public, trains, planes, boats, or scooters. God has prepared that for you. That food, every last one of you should never go hungry. God has prepared that for you. God is prepared to protect you from every bill collected. There should be no bill. The only bill that you owe anybody is your love, your respect for God, your love for others as you love yourself. That's the only thing that you owe any human being. And every system on the face of the earth is there to deny God. Capitalism, democracy. You think democracy is any different than slavery? No. Only thing, there's no difference in democracy and slavery. If slavery exists under democracy, uh, uh, dictatorship, it's the same thing. And when people are being hurt under democracy, that's the, and you don't want to change it because you say, we the people, and we got the right, we got the majority, you are a majority slaveholder. You are a majority slaveholder. Now, if I, you would think that if I want to be president of the United States, I want to say things to please you. I want to smile in your face and get you to smile back. No, I'm not trying to be your brother like that. I'm not trying to be somebody who want to make government small so you can enjoy your life. I've seen government small. The government was small when they were slaughtering the Indians. Government was small when slavery exists. Government was small when women didn't have no rights. So why should I anything thinking about going back and making a small government so the people who have all, who, what you call them? I can't think of them right now. <coughs> Who've always enjoyed the life. <coughs> Excuse me. Who have always benefited at the expense of others. Can continue. That's what the Republicans offer. And poor Barack Obama, I don't know what's wrong with him. What does he say that all he's talking about what he want to do and does everything different? I know he just drove black people crazy when he got a black man to drive him here and there or to carry his toiletry when he go places or go to the clubs with him if he ever go and all surrounded himself with all these white people and I ain't got nothing against white people except they say the dogs just like everybody else but sur surrounded himself with all these white people who were with working before and maintain the status quo that we have today all of the generations back and he can't detach himself from that well i'm not mad at him i am not mad at him at all because he doesn't know any better i'm a little mad with christians and people who say no god because they're lying they have no honor and respect for god and so that puts me in an awkward position it says that i know god and i must do what god dictates me to do irregardless of what you, the system of America, thinks or what the system of America will do to me if I don't follow the norm. It is my duty and my responsibility to follow God as one who's committed to God and one who lives as an example to the rest of you who are out of your mind. Well, I'll tell you this. I know that here in America and